and hello and welcome back, everybody. Our next talk is by Moss. Take it away. Cool. Good morning, Purple Connors, live streamers, those watching the VOD later of every shape, ability, and gender. Rounding out your morning, we're going to be talking about being part of a team that builds Secret Squirrel that lets people and squirrels do stuff on the web. And to do their Secret Squirrel stuff, people will have accounts and sign into them so that nobody else can pretend to be them. So we're going to go on a little bit of an adventure, and let's start by signing in. So this is your typical you know, sign-in page. You enter in your email, you enter in your password, you click sign in, and then you get access and do your Secret Squirrel stuff. But unfortunately, we've got either our email or our password wrong. So one thing here Secret Squirrel is trying to do is keep a secret of who even has an account. So if we can't log in and do our stuff, what can we do? Well, let's have a look at the form again. We can keep trying things in email and password and click the sign-in button until it stops giving us an error. Or we've got this other option here that says forgot password question mark. So let's go here. Now, no one ever chooses to go on a password reset adventure. This is the option that you go to because you can't do the thing that you wanted to do in the first place. And websites give you this because otherwise you'd get completely stuck. You'd either not use the website again, or you'd try and gain access to your account by contacting support or a person and convincing them that you have access to the account. But you've already forgotten the thing that would typically prove to the website that you have access to the account. So in order to prevent like, your support people getting constantly inundated with people saying, yep, I'm totally legitimately Morris the Squirrel, or Moss the Squirrel, then we give you this sort of forgot password flow. Now let's look at what one of these flows look like, because honestly, they're kind of forgettable. Once you're done with them, you can kind of forget about forgot password. So. Typically, you'll have a way to send a password reset request to an email address. Because without knowledge of a password, the next best thing to prove that you are who you say you are is access to the email address that was signed up for an account. The forgot password thing here could also be like asking for username, and then it would do a little bit of a mapping and try and work out what email address to send that sort of to for access. Uh, but that opens a different kind of can of worms that so we're going to just politely sidestep for this talk. So somebody comes up, enters in an email, and goes, yep, I need to get be sent a forgot password for that email address. And then there's some words here. They're vaguely important. But honestly, once you've told somebody, we will email you with instructions, they just go off to their inbox and wait for the email. So let's go off to our inbox and wait for the email. And what, hey, we've got a uh, reset your squirrel password from Secret Squirrel. So let's click on that and open that up. And this is an email that goes, hey, a request to reset your password has been made on Secret Squirrel. If you did not make this request, you can safely ignore this email, which is language that usually really inspires confidence in me when this arrives unprompted in my inbox. But honestly, there's actually not a lot of action that you can take as a person who receives this. And if you contact the website support, there's not a lot of action they can take as well. Like, this sort of password reset token is valid for a little bit of amount of time, but if somebody doesn't get access to it, like, what can they do? But if you get this a lot, you can probably just ignore the thing that says that it's safe to ignore and tell people, like, hey, somebody's actively trying to attack me. And then there's this link. And we usually train people out of clicking links on emails. But you kind of absolutely need to do this here. This is the only way that the website's able to prove that you have access to this email. But it's kind of OK, because like, if you request a reset password for a website and then you get a reset password email, you can kind of have an idea that there's a link between those two things. And that kind of helps you protect a little bit, it's a little bit against phishing. So we click the link, and we get to enter a new password. And then rather annoyingly, we have to retype the new password commonly. This is a little bit of a roadblock in the stumble, but the retype is there to save you from having a more embarrassing thing of setting a new password, making a typo in there, and then having to go and do forgot password again because you forgot the password that you just entered. 
And then you hit reset password, and either the website will directly log you in after that, or you'll go back to the login screen and log in, and then all websites absolutely celebrate you logging in, like that's the end of your adventure. No, this is sort of when you get to do the thing that you wanted to do in the first place. But for our journey today through Password Reset, this is the end of the adventure, and we can talk a little bit more about the Password Reset flow we just went through that you normally forget about afterwards because nobody really remembers the speed bump on their way to doing the thing they wanted to do in the first place. Unless it was really annoying or they got stuck in the process, which we'll be talking about. The other thing we're talking about is that there's no heroics in the password reset journey. It's not a heroic quest. There's no refusal of the call or anything like that. And also, the people working on the password reset flow for websites typically don't get promoted if it works very well. They do get a lot of pressure if it doesn't work well, though. It's one of those things where if everything goes normal, it's mundane and boring and nobody notices. And if things go poorly, everybody kind of notices. And then, well, there are kind of some heroes in the password reset journey. They're the people who are attacking password reset and trying to gain access that they don't already have mostly because they kind of cast themselves in the role of a hero in that. It's very exciting to try and gain something that you don't already have. So typically, when we model password reset, people model it from a person perspective. They model it from, here's a legitimate person who's trying to reset their password and prove that they have access to the account that they have access to, and here's our super villain attacker who's trying to nefariously get access to something that they don't have access to. But when you're working on the kind of defensive side of password reset and managing these flows, how do you model and handle the intent of the person at the keyboard? Because they can both exhibit behaviors that look the same. Back at when we're entering an email, somebody could be entering a lot of different emails, which looks a lot like account enumeration and trying to find out who has accounts at the website. But it could just be that I have a ton of different email addresses that I use, and I'm not sure which one I gave this website. Or it could be that I'm constantly typoing my email address or don't even remember it. So if you're modeling how you protect password reset from this um, sort of people perspective, it can be very hard to tease apart the different intents and behaviors and what you can do with those things. Instead, I reckon that we should be modeling from the perspective of the password reset token. Because we send a token out through email to somebody, and then our website kind of expects that token to kind of rock back up through another door and say, hi, I have this token. So if you have a valid password reset token, we let you go through the happy path and reset your email. And if you don't, the website's supposed to let you do nothing. And modeling by this token gives us actions for our system to take, specifically to show game over screens to everyone who doesn't have the gray key of password reset. So let's have a talk about these game overs. The first game over screen here in the bottom right is we will email you. And the interesting thing about this is that we can actually just show a single page for every case that comes through sending an email. In the very happy path, we send off an email to somebody with an active account. In everything else, we don't actually send an email. And the best recovery path is to start again. So it's perfectly OK for in every case to say this, we will email you with instructions on how to reset your password if the email you entered has an account with us. Because as we went through the flow, you pretty much read this and then go straight to your inbox and wait for an email to arrive. And if it doesn't arrive, your recovery flow is to start again. You will maybe want a few other little errors in here. Maybe there's like a simple email validation to do, like make sure that you put an at symbol in what you're putting in password reset. Or maybe you'll need an error page for like, hey, sorry, we can't send emails at the moment. You're not going to get anything. Please try again later. The next kind of game over is once you get the email and receiving a token. 
So when you click on the link, the happy path here is when the reset token is valid and not expired, and you can go through to entering a password. But otherwise, you need some sort of page to handle what's going on if that token isn't valid or is expired, or if someone's trying to reuse a token that's already been used. And a screen for an error message that says, has expired or not valid, this error message feels really weird when you're writing it, because you're saying it could be this case or it could be this case. But for people who are in our sort of legitimate person persona, their recovery path is to send another email. And for people who are in our attacker persona, we don't want to give them more information around what's going on. But when we're modeling this, we're just talking about whether the token is valid or not, and giving this behavior that works in both kind of models. Then there's if you get through to the password reset page. The happy path here is when your token is valid, not expired, and you successfully enter the same password into the enter password and retype password phase, and then your password is reset. And everything else is kind of a game over. And once again, the best recovery path is to start again. But here, really good language to use is to just tell somebody that their reset request has expired. If somebody's got to this point, you've kind of checked at one point that the token was valid. And it's really, really important to let somebody know that their password was not reset if you show an error here. Because the worst thing as a user in these flows is to get to the end, get in there and go, wait, but did that reset my password or not? And then being in this very indeterminate state. But once again, we can model and work on all of this off the token. And our recovery path is to start again. And now let's go into a bonus interesting game over. This is a true story. Once upon a time, there was a corporate office that bought some security software to minimize the risk of being fished. And what the software would do is it would visit every link in an email to check if the link was safe. And this is a story of unintended consequences. Because it turns out that if you have a tool that gets a web page before you can get a web page, a lot of password reset flows extire the token when somebody gets the web page. And then you can't ever reset your password without contacting your own corporate IT support to whitelist a website. And then that just turns password reset into a massively rememberable roadblock. It also gets really weird if you first don't understand what's quite going on here and you contact the website support so that their password reset is broken because they're like, well, it works for everybody. What's interesting and different about you? But this is one of the interesting things around password resets. At a certain point, you're sending out a token through email to somebody and then you're waiting for them to come back with it. And your website has no control over what's happening there. So how do we sort of work on our system to make it a little bit kinder to these kinds of game overs? Well, first of all, the big thing to think about is the session token. The, the token session. The words are failing me a little. But working out what you do with that token over time. You'll invalidate them after an expiry time. Typically, sort of 30 minutes, I've seen things down to around 15 minutes. I've seen things a bit longer. But honestly, like since your recovery path is, is please just start this again, it's OK to tell somebody after a while, like, hey, you, you need to start this again. But it's kind of useful to just invalidate these session, these password reset tokens when somebody successfully resets their password. Because that makes your modeling of the system much easier. It makes the attack surface like a little bit less. And well, I just think it's a good idea. The other good idea that I kind of have around thinking about 
password reset token sessions is what do we do in cases where somebody comes along and requests a password reset, and then a little bit later comes along and requests another password reset, and then they request it again? Because this could be somebody who's having trouble receiving emails. And so we've got a token that's still valid. So one of the interesting things that we can do is we can just resend that same token that is valid, because this helps somebody who is struggling with receiving emails in a timely fashion. Because if you try and expire them when you send a new one, you'll have somebody who's waiting two minutes for an email, about a minute gets like, you know, very impatient and requests another one, then they receive one that's already expired, then they receive one that's valid, then they can start racing themselves. And if somebody's in our kind of attacker persona, they could be trying to generate and observe a lot of different tokens to try and work out how those are created and attack them sort of in interesting fashions there. But by thinking about the validity of the session of the token, we're able to do interesting things for both those cases. And with this recommendation, our session comes to an end, and it's time for everybody's favorite segment, Secret Squirrel Says. Secret Squirrel Says, model your password reset flows from the perspective of the password reset token instead of the user or an attacker. Because in modeling it in this fashion, you can think of system behaviors that are both helping the legitimate persona and stymieing the attacker persona without getting into a lot of overcomplicated um, kind of states of mind. Consider the session and expiry of the password reset token. And there is only one happy path through password reset. And the recovery flow for everything else is to start over again. Thank you, PurpleCon. <laughs>